Cutting a complex shape out of a piece of material doesn't have to be a scary task. And in today's video, we're going to talk about that simple little checkbox inside of Contour that can help you with a task like this. We're also going to look at how you can take this into your more advanced projects to help you with those as well. All right, so let's hop right into this. Uh, here's the, the solid model, and over here I've got a simplified wireframe version, and this is what I've already got a toolpath thrown onto. So it's a contour toolpath, nothing crazy here, and we've just got basically starting at the very top, doing a straight lead in, cutting around the part, and we're cutting 50 thou deep. And let's hop into a quick little verify here just to get an idea of what this part looks like with no tabs. So a part like this, you could probably get away with just profiling around this contour and dropping it out as a slug and you'd have no issues. Uh, but we needed a part to try and demo uh, tabs and uh, just doing a square would be kind of boring. So, you know, watching Squid Game and seeing people doing these, these, these shapes and trying to scratch them out. Life of a machinist, you always see tool paths everywhere, right? So I figured, hey, this would be a good part to try and demo some tabs on. So let's go ahead and start making some tabs on this profile. So here we are back in the contour parameters. And as you may expect, if you want to create some tabs, you have to go to the tabs tab and enable tabs. So once these are turned on, there's a couple different ways we can make tabs. We've got the options for automatic and we've got an option here for manual. And then down at the bottom is we've got the area where we can define the shape and size of the tab that it is we're trying to make. So what I'm gonna do here first is I'm gonna define the shape of my tab and then we'll come back to positioning after the fact. First up, we've got full and if I click on that, notice the image over here changes and you can get an idea of what full does. So full is gonna make that tab be exactly from the top of your stock all the way down to the bottom of your stock. Partial gives you basically the option to set the thickness of that. And that's what I'm going to do down here. I'm going to set my tab thickness to 10 thou. And then regardless of full or partial, we'll always have access to this width. And I'm going to change this to 100 thou. And again, regardless of full or partial, we have the option to either do vertical, as the picture shows, or ramp moves, again, as the picture shows. So... Typically, end mills are not big fans of doing direct plunges, especially if your material is overly thick. So that's where you may be required to do a ramping motion. And again, depending on how, how well your end mill reacts to the angle, you may need to increase or decrease this angle. Uh, a lot of it will vary on the, the end mill that you're using, the material that you're cutting. So again, just make uh, adjustments here as needed. I'm going to leave mine at 45. And this is defining the size and shape of all the tabs we're about to place using this tab positions menu at the top. For our first tab positioning, we're gonna go with just the defaults here. We're gonna leave this set to automatic and we're gonna leave this set at maximum distance between tabs with a value of 9.5 inches. Now with these settings, we will only be getting one tab placed on this profile. And to really understand why that is, we need to dive into our profile a little bit more. So for that, I'm gonna go ahead and analyze this contour. And from this, I'm looking for the information down at the very, very bottom, which is the total length of our entire contour. So we've got 6.7429 inches. So in order to generate more than one tab using this max distance between tabs option, our value here would have to be less than the distance around our profile, but we would also need to subtract the width of our tabs, which is 100 thou in this case. And if we were to make this slightly smaller than this value, we should get more than one tab. So this is good if you know that your setup is rigid for a specific distance. And given that distance, Mashcam will insert the correct number of tabs so that no spacing is greater than the value you give it. The effect that the number of tab setting has is much more obvious. If we put in the number four, we will get four evenly spaced tabs. Obviously, if we were to put in the number six, we will get six evenly spaced tabs. The next setting below is create tabs on shapes less than and tab all. Now these will come into play when you've got multiple chains within the one tool path. Tab all does exactly what it says. It will place tabs on all chains. Create tabs on shapes less than will place tabs onto shapes that are smaller or equal to the size that you have listed. 
Next, we'll be switching over from automatic over to manual. Now within manual, we've got two options here as well. So this first one is position. Now this one, if you want to place multiple tabs, I wouldn't say this is your most efficient option. Position is good for adding to an existing set. Once the position button is clicked on, you'll be asked to select the chain that you want to add tabs to. So I'll go ahead and select that now. And you'll notice here my cursor becomes a tab that I can move about in place and any existing tabs will show up on the profile as well. So I'm going to drag this down to the side about there and left click. That will complete the placement of the one tab. Each additional tab we want to place will go through those same steps. So now Harpart has had a tab added right in the middle section. You also notice in this profile that we've got one tab that's not quite complete down here in this uh, bottom of the handle. It would be nice if we can move that up to the tip. Now we're going to get into moving tabs in a second here, but back in our tabs menu here, the other option for manual was use square point for tab position. So this one here won't work given our current setup. We need to create some extra geometry for this to work. But before we even do that, one thing you may have noticed on this page is that there's no way to delete existing tabs. So given the tabs that I have, I can't edit them, delete them or move them on this page. For that, we'll have to exit out of this click on our geometry tab of the toolpath, right click on the chain and come down to edit tabs. So as you can see, we've got options here for edit, move, add, delete, and delete all. So let's just go ahead and try delete first. I'm gonna delete and delete that last tab that I made. I'm just gonna click on it. And let's go ahead and try move. And let's grab this tab that's over here and move it to the end. Let's have a look and see at what add will do. So with add, same thing we saw in our, our menu here, but now we're adding new ones to it and we can place these wherever we want. Uh, I don't want to actually add one, so I'm just going to click on escape. Edit. Once you click on edit, you can come to a tab and basically now you've got control over that individual tab's shape and size. So as an example, let's increase this width up to 200,000. Click OK. And notice this tab is now bigger than all the rest. So let's just go ahead and edit that one. And we'll put it back to the way that it was. And the last thing we're going to do here, I'm going to get rid of all my tabs, delete all, green check, because I want to start over again with my tab creation. So what we're going to be looking at now is this setting U square point for tab position. So what we need to do here is create some square points. Now, how do you go about creating a square point? Let me just zoom in here a little bit on this umbrella. I'm going to go to my home tab. And in my attributes column from the pull down, I'm coming down to point style and I'm grabbing the square point style. Now in my wireframe tab, point position, I can start placing points where I would like to see tabs. So what I'm gonna do is go about uh, midway right there and go same thing on the opposite side. And I'm gonna do the same thing at the very bottom there. Okay, so just those three points, green check. I'm gonna go back into the parameters of the toolpath down and make sure I've got this checked, use square point for tab position. And I want this to be the middle. So the square box that I've drawn, I want that to be the middle of my tab. Obviously, we've got options for start and end. And I think the picture explains that just fine. So we'll leave that set as is. Midpoint, green check. Toolpath is rebuilt. Let's launch into verify. And now we're getting those tabs at the exact location of our square points. And just when you thought you knew everything about tabs in Mastercam, there is in fact one more tab of tabs to know about. And this menu all relates to the tab cutoff. So now that we've got some tabs on our part, we probably want to get rid of them. And we can do this by enabling our cutoff operation. The first option is after all contour change. And this is mainly for when you're doing multiple components. This will tab each part individually, come back afterwards and cut off all the tabs one by one. If you enable after each contour chain, so this will cut one of the contours with tabs and then cut off each of those tabs in that particular contour. With after each enabled, you also get access to cut tabs with first finish pass. This is used when you're doing multi passes. You can do a rough cut that has tabs and then your finished cut will have no tabs. One thing to keep in mind with these options up here is you'll be using all the same parameters as the source operation. Stock to leave, lead in and lead out will all be used on the tab cutoff operation. If you want complete control of your tab cutoff operation, Separate operation is the choice you want to go with. With separate operation enabled, I'll green check out and notice when the toolpath rebuilds, it generates a second operation, which is the tab cutoff operation. With this newly generated tab cutoff, you have complete control over lead in and lead out, cut parameters, 
and you can even go and select a different tool. Now, as an example, what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to leave some stock on these cutoff operations. And I'm going to add a little bit of arcing to this as well and generate this new tool path. Now, when this is verified, we'll see the main operation run and then the separate operation come in for the tab cutoff. Now, depending on your application, leaving a small little nub like this behind on a part like this is probably preferable. That way you don't run the risk of your cutter damaging your nicely finished walls, especially as that part breaks free. So you're not only going to be using tab in the 2D world. Tab is a very common toolpath when you get into five axis parts. So here's a part we cut a while back and we did do some video for it. And notice the last two toolpaths on this part. The second last one, if I zoom in, you can see that there's tabs being left at the bottom of this part. So basically what we're doing here is we've machined this part completely. This would be a very difficult part to hold on to in a normal vise. So what we do is we hold on to some extra material, machine the entire part, and then cut some tabs at the bottom which make getting the part off of the excess material quite easy. So you could come in here now, and instead of cutting these off and having this part go flying, you come in here with a pair of snips and just cut that right in the very middle. And then you're again, you'll be left with just grinding or blending those little tab marks into your existing face. Or if you have strict tolerance requirements and surface finish requirements on there, you can get into a secondary operation and hold that piece rigidly and do a finishing cut. Another use case for tabs would be window machining. So here I've got this part. This is the umbrella and it's been uh, 3D-ified. And this would be an extremely difficult part to hold on to again to access all sides of this to machine it. So a common strategy here, instead of making up specialized fixturing, is to simply encase the part inside of a window. So we take a block that's larger than the part, encase it inside, add some tabs to it. Now I use my contour that I placed those square blocks onto that are going to generate my tab cutoffs. I've used those as the center point of the solid tabs that I've modeled into this so that the 3D tool paths are aware of those tabs that have been modeled on. The result being is you get a block of material that you can hold into your vise machine from one side inside of the window. Once the first side is done, you can then flip it over, still holding onto that block inside of your vise. Machine side two. And your final operation would be your tab cutoff, which breaks the part free. And again, I'm staying off of the surface here, so I'd have some blending to do with those tab marks uh, at the end. And that's about going to wrap it up for our video on tabs inside of MASHCAM. So if you're still watching this video, thanks a lot for sticking around and taking all this information in. I know it was a lot. And I'm going to ask you to do one favor for me. So I want to mess with some of the people that only watch a small portion of our videos. And what I want you to do is down in the comment section, I want you to pick a number between 100 and 200 and basically just say, I think it's, and then your number. So for example, I would write, I think it's 119. And that's your comment. And then what I'll do as a thank you for posting those comments is maybe within the next week or two, maybe we'll give it two weeks. We'll do a draw of all these comments here and we'll see if we can send out a couple t-shirts. So leave a comment down there, just write down, I think it's, and your number. And then in a couple of weeks, we'll draw a few names and send out a couple t-shirts.